Hi, my name is Kevin Taylor. I would like to say to my fellow Ghanaians, ignore the bogus FTI forensic investigation report. Ignore that. It's useless. This is with all due respect. So without your respect, my fellow Ghanaians, I've always been saying this to you, focus. When you focus, you get to the last cent. Let us not lose focus on this PDS scandal. This government, this Nana Adodam Kwakav government, this NPP government is trying everything to take our eyes off this fraudulent, this stinking deal, which at the end of the day will direct almost all the money, all the money we make as a country into the pockets of a few greedy men and women in this country. This is why I have always said to my fellow Ghanaians, focus. I would like to state categorically today that the so-called forensic audit report on the PDS scandal is bogus and embarrassing and no right-thinking Ghanaian should accept that piece of disgusting work FTI put together to exonerate this government, this stinking, greedy, corrupt government which is neck deep in this fraudulent deal. After reading the government's 30-day forensic audit on PDS, I came to the realization that the people we have in this government today and also the so-called media men we have today are a bunch of liars. They are a bunch of jokers and fraudsters. Some of the media men, I have to be very specific, there are a few good ones, but those ones, they've been pushed to the peripheries. I hope that every Ghanaian have had the chance to read the excerpts of the report that are circulating on social media. Let us assume for a minute, yes, my fellow Ghanaians, let's relax, let's focus, and let's assume for a minute what we have read so far is accurate and a true reflection of the report submitted by FTI Investment, the organization that was contracted by MEDA to perform the investigation. I read the report and I am baffled by the level of disrespect and ineptitude these people think they can get away with. They think they can get away with murder in the dark. In fact, I have some few questions to ask. I've always been asking questions and nobody seemed to be answering those questions, but I'll keep pushing. I'll keep asking the questions till we get reasonable answers. Yes, I have some questions to ask about this PDS deal and more importantly, the so-called forensic investigation which was done by FTI. With all due respect, the first question I would like to ask is what was the mandate or charge given to audit the auditing firm? I would like to ask the question again. What was the mandate or charge given to the auditing firm? We want to know their mandate. The second question is, are we okay as Ghanaians that our assets, when I talk about our assets, I'm talking about ECG. Yes, our assets, ECG, have been given to a company, PDS, for only $1 million. For only $1 million seed capital from one shareholder. According to Section 6 and Section 7 of the report, the report basically confirms that the rest of the money came from ECG-owned cash flow. I am not saying that. The report they came out with, it's in it. Everybody can read it. They said the report basically confirmed that the rest of the money came from ECG's own cash flow. My fellow Ghanaians, as I've always said, let's focus and ask questions and demand reasonable answers. Now, the third question is, according to the report, some of the conditioned precedents were waived to allow PDS to take over ECG's assets because PDS did not have the money to establish letters of credit, which in the first place was part of the financial capability upon which the concession was given to them in the first place. This report is telling us that PDS was given this deal even though the MEDA and the government of Ghana knew that PDS was not financially stable and being financially stable was the first thing they looked at before the contract was handed over. If their own report is telling Ghanaians such bold face facts, how can anyone look in the face of Ghanaians and say that they've not created this company, this PDS company, to loot, to share Ghana's assets and Ghana's wealth among a particular family and friends? My fellow Ghanaians, let's focus. This is the fourth question. Where is the capital? Where is the capital contributed by a major heirs towards the so-called 12.25 million fraudulent insurance premium? We just want to know. How much capital did Enedia AS? Remember, nobody from MEDA, from PDS themselves, from government of Ghana, the Attorney General, 
the judiciary, um, the justice department, and whoever was involved in this, nobody has come out to answer the question I asked in my two episodes. Where from Enagia AS? How much did they bring on board? Who actually made sure that they went through the process to be part of the deal? Nobody has answered that. We still don't know who brought Enagia AS, who their representatives are. Today I'm asking, how much was contributed by Enagia AS? That is the fourth question. Now, I would like to ask, where is David Asara's share capital contribution towards the 12.25 million premium? It's a simple question. Where is David Asara's share capital contribution towards the 12.25 million premium? Where is Coco's contribution? Remember Coco? Coco used to work at the Dankwa Institute. She's part of it. I just want to know, where is Coco's contribution? Now, I would like to ask, where is Asmini's share contribution towards the $12.25 million? Where is Philip Ayensu's share contribution? These are simple questions that demand reasonable answers. So basically, what it means is we have handed over ECG and its assets to a group of family and friends through an illegal procurement process. Basic. And then they do not even have to pay any money. For the assets but they get to take over ecg and all payments from the public to ecg are handed over to these people you see they don't pay anything all the money that goes to ecg those monies are handed over to these people and this is not fraud according to our president he says this is not fraud and you see this is how our president and his family protects the public purse. i've always said that we should not allow these vietnam suit journalists and chain smokers to dictate to us my fellow Ghanaians. Let's focus. This is the real news. Here, this is where you get the facts. Unedited facts. This is the real news. They are refusing to tell you because they have become beggars on a lap of a midget. Now, I'm going to tell Ghanaians, yes, I'm going to tell Ghanaians why these people, why these PDS people could not bring money to the table. They are primarily acting as frontmen. Yes, those people are just acting. The names you hear every day, they are just acting as frontmen. The real owners are just behind the scenes. And they are doing this with the assistance of MEDA, with the support of MCC of the United States as they hide their own shoddy work in this compact deal. Now, for every Ghanaian to appreciate the real corporates that are behind this PDS deal, let's revisit 2008 when Ken Oforiata, Edward Bamti, Kufuado's brother, and Kelly Kajapo, and also Gabi Ochredakon, and Nana Opoku Oforiata were accused of mismanaging $47 million of Ekufuado's money. You know, these guys mismanaged Ekufuado's $47 million, and that, that report was made public. You can go read the African Watch and all that, and you see that publication, and it was real. Now, these are the same individuals that the president has strategically placed to ensure that Electricity Company of Ghana is ultimately transferred from the state. To his family so basically what the president is trying to do is you these guys you embezzled my money now i'm going to put you on strategic position in strategic positions to make sure that you bring back my money that is why you see all these people in some very 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 important and tricky positions so this is the reason why somebody like kelly kajapo was strategically placed at ecg as board chairman yes and he was also placed on the board of bank of ghana and meda as a non-voting member and Ken Oforiata as a finance minister, which automatically also placed him on MEDA board. So you get the connection. Please, we should not forget MEDA is the main government organization that makes key decisions regarding the power distribution concession. This is also the reason why Ken Oforiata was adamant in getting the president's lawyer, Akoto Ampao, to sneak Tony Otinjesi, Kwame Bamfo, and Mike Chum into the PDS deal by hook or by crook. My fellow Ghanaians, stick with me and you understand where this crime is coming from. I would like to say this, and it's a promise. We will discuss these individuals very soon and also how each, yes, how each of these actors are connected to their paymasters. It is very interesting to note that Tony Ortin is one person that has been affiliated with MEDA and ECG since the beginning of the compact too. He's a very interesting character that you may want to know more about. And I promise you, I'll give you more information on that guy. Now, the bottom line is none of the Ghanaians, perhaps the Angolan shareholders, put up any real funds before PDS was constituted and running. Meanwhile, the Ghana Investment Promotion, the GIPC Act, requires foreign investors to transfer their capital contribution through the banking system before they are recognized as foreign investors in Ghana. Now, wait. I keep telling you, focus. Now, wait. 
who heads the institution, the GIPC, Yofi Grant, another director of Data Bank, which belongs to Ken Oforiata. My fellow Ghanaians, let me make this clear to every single Ghanaian. My fellow Ghanaians, let me make this clear to you. PDS is not sufficiently capitalized because the fact of the matter is that the people who currently appear as the owners are in fact not the real owners. They are veils. These people we see as the owners of PDS are not the owners. They are just veils. Let me tell you, they are veils. When you peel off this veil, you will see the president, Ekufuado. You will see Ken Ufuriata. You will see Bamti, the president's brother. You will see Gabi and Nana Opoku Ufuriata, or Chehine's brother, and a member of the Achim Mafia. These are the real people behind PDS, pure and simple. And some of these people, don't forget, my fellow Ghanaians, let's focus. Some of these people I have just mentioned are ex-convicts. And that's a topic to discuss another day. With all due respect, my fellow Ghanaian, the fundamental question of who the shareholders are will always present problems for PDS because the makeup of PDS is fraud from the beginning. And any attempt, any attempt to massage the facts will only create more problems for these people. Some of the materials I have on these people, some of the materials are damning. The United States Inspector General of U.S. said has expressed interest in this issue with regards to MCC. In fact, I have spoken to them several times. That is why I have been quiet on this PDS scandal. I'm speaking to them and I'm giving them all the evidence. The thriller in Manila, the whatever you have, I'm making sure they are getting all the right evidence. So my fellow Ghanaians, people should not be worried. We will get to the bottom of this PDS scandal. We are serious in making sure that the American taxpayer money is not applied to condone fraud and conflict of interest in this matter to the detriment of the people of Ghana and also the people of the United States of America. I say to you that this PDS deal cannot qualify as a private sector participation. Again, it is a bill created to lubricate the transfer of Ghana's assets to enrich family and friends. Nana Dodanko Ekufuado is the embodiment of corruption. Yes, Ekufuado is an embodiment of corruption. His appetite to infest every aspect of this government with corruption is unprecedented in the history of this nation. The president, Nana Ekufuado, has a choice in this matter. He can do the right thing or choose to ignore the issues. Either way, the result will not be pretty for our party, the NPP, and the people of this country. In fact, I am ashamed to have a president like Ekufuado. He is an embodiment. Ekufuado is an embodiment of lies and corruption. And finally, as a caution though, I will advise Ken Oforiata, the cousin of the president and the finance minister of Ghana, to leave our infrastructure fund out of this. He can clean his mess with his Tony Otinjesi and his Mike Chum and Kwame Bamfo and the other guys, but he should not dare touch our infrastructure fund. Ghanaians, we will never rest, especially myself. I will never rest until the fraudsters behind this stinking, this disgusting PDS scandal are revealed. They are apprehended, persecuted, and jailed. Enough of the generational theft this country is experiencing under the leadership of Ikufuado. Ghana deserves better. And if even, we will have to make sure that this PDS deal is cancelled and ECG handed over to Ghanaians to fully own and operate, we will do that because we can't just allow a few thieves to come together and take advantage of our assets. My fellow Ghanaians, let us focus and also ask questions and also demand reasonable answers. My name has always been Kevin Ekobedu Taylor, and this is with all due respect.